Bird is one of the great shooters in the history of the sport. Not even close. Not good. He was great. He's one of the top five three-point shooters of all time. He, well, that's how good Bird is. Oh, yes. We're, we're not, we're, we're one three-point shooting not. contest. He was phenomenal. Bird well, wait is a, a great shooter. This is the face of a Larry Bird denier. Because one seemingly innocuous comment about how great of a three-point shooter Larry Bird was had him all in his feelings. Doggy, it's just math. It's, it's attempts, it's makes, and it's percentage. And there's no way you could ever argue Larry Bird is a top three three-point shooter of all time. There's plenty of people that have shot more, made more, and guess what? Made more at a higher percentage than Larry Bird from three. He's not one of the greatest three-point shooters ever. Now, as someone who claims to be a student of the game, why in the world would J.J. Reddick say something so idiotic? In the words of the great Roy Jones Jr., y'all must have forgot. J.J. Reddick, this video is dedicated to you. I lived that 80s era, and Larry Bird was one of the greatest three-point shooters that's ever played this game. Fuck percentages. It ain't about that. It's about hitting big shots. Things that he couldn't do as a player. Larry Bird hit more big three-point shots than anyone, even to this day. And he did it in supreme fashion, while trash-talking every step of the way. We're playing Phoenix, and we're way ahead, okay? When we're, we're down in the old saddle dome that they had outside. Right, right. And Larry, you know, we're playing good as a team. Larry has the worst fourth quarter known to man. I mean, he's throwing the ball to the other team. I'm like, good Lord, we had like a 15-point lead. Next thing you know, we're down two. And I'm like, oh, how in the world are we going to lose this game? Man? So we have a play, out of bounds play. Larry says, I'm going to bust off the play, and I'm just going to come out, and I'm going to shoot a three. And I'm like, no, don't do that. And I'm like, just, let's shoot a two, please. Go to the hole, try to get fouled. Let's just get into overtime, see if we can't win this game. So you know, Larry not only tells me that, he walked by the bench and says, you know, typical birdie, just real slow. Fixing to bust a three on your guys and go home. <laughs> and so he breaks the play. Max looking, looking, loops it to Bird, a runner. It's good! It's good! And the Celtics win it! Bird hits and the Celtics win it! 103 to 101, a wow. three-pointer by Larry Bird at the buzzer. <laughs> and he gets the ball, jumps out, busts the play, comes out, gets the ball at the slot, shoots the ball. As the ball's in the air, he kind of turns towards the Phoenix bench and yells, told you so, <laughs> and running to the locker room. And I, I, just, I just started laughing. I was like, oh, man. That was Birdie. I just, he had the confidence. Man, that dude had so much confidence. He talked to the coaches. He talked, he talked to everybody. He was talking trash all the time, man. But fun. Great competitor, man. And what Kevin McHale failed to mention is that Larry Bird had not taken a single three-pointer that entire game. Hey, JJ, I hope you're listening. Larry Bird was the first player to make the three-point shot a strategic weapon. You know, you weren't out there taking 14 or 15. He liked to use it as a dagger in the fourth quarter. Nobody else used it as strategically as Larry Bird did. Even Michael Jordan understood that shooting too many threes was not the best way to win. have that mentality as I found out in the in the first game of making threes you don't go to the hole as much you go to the three-point line and you start sitting there waiting for someone to find you and that's not my mentality and I don't want to create that because it takes away from all phases of my game my game is, is a fake drive to the hole penetrate dish off you know dunk or whatever but for some reason JJ Reddick actually thinks basketball is just a math equation and he couldn't be more wrong. Just because three is more than two doesn't mean you should jack up a bunch of threes. Larry Bird not only was a great three-point shooter, but he had one of the highest basketball IQs in NBA history. And even he never averaged over four three-point attempts per game in any season. But he shot them and made them when they truly mattered. Like in this game, when the Celtics were down by three, with seven seconds to go, and then this happened. Crowd is standing up. It goes now to Bird. Bird goes up top. And a three-point field goal to Bird. Four seconds left. He hits it. And it's all tied up again. My goodness. And if you think that one-legged three-point shot was luck, we'll explain this. Because in that same game, in overtime, with two seconds left, 
and the Celtics down by one, this happened. Eddie Ainge to inbounds for the Celtics, trailing by one, two seconds left. In the bird, he fires. He yes! And the Celtics win! Unbelievable! Larry Bird at the buzzer! There's something to be said for the guy who does it when you have to have it done, as right. opposed to those guys that can do it for the first three quarters. But do you see Steph Curry, can you say he's the best shooter that we've ever seen? I don't know about that. The thing is, you know, anybody can shoot it once tied. It's when you're down one or down two. I mean, how many guys make that shot? But since J.J. Redick loves his numbers so much, let's compare prime Larry Bird's three-point numbers with Steph Curry's 2016 unanimous MVP season. Steph Curry shot 45.4% from three while Larry Bird shot 42.3% from three. Now, in a vacuum, using only this number, the unsophisticated analyst might assume that Steph Curry was a better three-point shooter than Larry Bird, but not so fast. How about we compare each player to the three-point shooters of their own era? In 2016, the league average three-point percentage was 35.4%. This means that Steph Curry was 28% better than league average. In 1985, the league average three-point percentage was 28.2%. This means that Larry Bird was 51% better than league average. So, in reality, Larry Bird dominated the three-point line in his era even better than 2016 unanimous MVP Steph Curry. But numbers don't make an argument. Their only purpose is to supplement what we already know to be true. If the three-point shot was what it is today, back in the 80s, Burr would have scored 50 a game. He made every mid-ranger in the world, and he was a 90% free throw shooter. Outside of one jumper, when he missed a game four jumper against Magic, he had a broken hand. I don't recall ever ever a big shot in a big game that he ever missed so answer this question if you need one player to hit one three-point shot to save your life who are you taking steph curry who lost the three-point shooting contest five times to his peers or larry bird who won the three-point shooting contest back to back to back there were pros back then There were cons back then, but to say anything disparaging about Larry Bird and his perimeter shooting and his three-point shooting, asinine. Like, J.J., he probably beat your ass in a three-point shooting contest today. And though it sounds like hyperbole, this is what a 60-year-old Larry Bird did at an Indiana Pacers practice. So the whole team is just stretching, and Larry just walks on the court, grabbed the ball, and started jacking threes, like, whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Like, I'm like, I'm looking at everybody, I'm like, do y'all see this right now? And he's made, he made like at least 10 in a row threes, like just in a row, and walked off and, and sat like he ain't do nothing. Like, it was breaking and folded his legs and just sitting there looking at us. I'm like, yo, this guy is nice. <laughs> I'm like, man, that's a legend right there. <laughs> Speaking of shooting threes, coach, you at the three-point competition, walking in the locker room. Who's playing? Did you really say that? Who's playing for a second? Yeah, I did. I scored <laughs> so bad. <laughs> because Leon Wood never crossed the three-point line. All he did was ever, ever sh- he was always shot three. So I thought he might be the competition. When I walked in there, he's sitting there, and I said, okay, now they're down to the nitty-gritty. Who's coming in second? So you already know who's going to win this. <laughs> I think they were like a little it. nervous. And after Larry Bird hit 11 straight threes in this final round, he decided to hit one off the backboard just for fun. Oh, wait a second. Off the glass. That chick's had my name on it for a week now, and I knew I was going to win this thing. And then the the walk off with your hand up. I mean, come on, coach. Come on. You know, when you're shooting them, you don't know what the score is. Right. But I had a feeling by the way the crowd was going, I had to make the last one. And that one there looked perfect all the way. So if it would have bounced out, I would have felt like an idiot. Well, did, but it went in, I got lucky and got the check and went home. 
Larry Bird winning the long distance shootout for the third year in a row. Now imagine that. Larry Bird, who didn't even see a three point line until after he entered the NBA. Take it in the face, then now watch him shoot it. Unbelievable. You know how far away that is? Somehow became the greatest, most clutch three point shooter of all time. And he did it in the most physical era of basketball. I don't care what J.J. Reddick says. Right. When I watch Steph Curry off the ball in a playoff game. Oh, he's great. Getting grabbed and held by Marcus Smart. They're attached to him at all times. Right. Then when I watch Larry Bird come off a pin down and no one's within five feet of him and they're shooting the gap. You're telling me one is more physical than the other? You're telling me that's more physical than, than Steph Curry being grabbed and held for 48 minutes? Uh, yeah. Well, J.J. continues to embarrass his university and diminishes the worth of a Duke degree by speaking with such colossal ignorance in public, with such arrogance and authority. It's idiocy that suggests that a no-hand-checking, finesse league where people are camping out 42 and a half feet from the basket is more physical than the NBA of 30, oh my God, don't talk about 50 or 60 years ago, but even 30 years ago. What does he come up with this? This defies common sense. And Michael Cooper, who was Larry Bird's toughest defender in the 80s, took J.J. Reddick's comments very personally. You know what? Watch your mouth, man, when you're talking about former players and who can do this and who can do that. Because the game changed in the 80s because it was so physical. In today's NBA, I don't know what game he's looking at. It's the, I, you can't touch the guy. Anytime you touch anybody, a three-point shooter, come close to them when they're landing, it's a foul. To say that Steph is getting more contact, man, that guy has no clue of how basketball was played in the 80s. And I guarantee you this, J.J. Reddick, if you had played in the 80s, this is Michael Cooper talking, I'd have locked your ass up. You wouldn't have got a shot off. You wouldn't have got nothing off. You had spent more time on the bench than on the floor. When I was on the floor, you couldn't have played when I was on the court. I mean, for J.J. Reddick to disrespect an entire generation of basketball players, what did he expect? First of all, Reddick don't know what the hell he's talking about. I I'm going to say it. Right? I agree. He don't know what the hell he's talking about. I'm like, what basketball was you watching? To say something as idiotic as that is ridiculous. And for J.J. Reddick, who've played this game, I'm very disappointed that he has said something so stupid. When I hear that, I'm like, you really don't know, do you? Yeah. We had our time. It was a great time. It's their time now. Yes. But don't crap on us to prove your point. Yeah. Because it doesn't make sense and it's not valid. I don't hate on no. these guys. You're, res you're responding right now. Yeah. You're not. I don't hate on these guys. These guys are great. I just don't like the disrespect. Yeah. Yeah. And to say that about Larry Bird, it's just a, it's just a stupid comment to make. Unfortunately, somewhere along the way, common basketball knowledge was lost. But hopefully, these Larry Bird stories enlighten you to why the world fell in love with basketball in the first place. And this particular play down, there's a timeout, and they're coming down, and Larry gets me at the top of the key, and he's walking me underneath his basket. He goes, Cooper, I'm ready to wear your ass out. What? Okay, I get down to my best defensive stance. He goes down the lane. He comes off the left side, and Robert Parrish sets a pick. And we knew the play. We knew what was coming up. And Kareem was ready. And as Larry comes off the pick, shoulder to shoulder with Parrish, and I'm trailing behind him, he catches the basketball right about the elbow. And he gets the ball, and he goes up. And Kareem stops him from turning the corner. Larry catches the ball, he goes up in the air, and here I come. And I'm like, I'm getting ready to smash this shit, man. So I jump up, and I got my hand, and I don't know how Larry got this ball between Kareem and I. Because Kareem had his hands up. I'm coming with my right hand, because, and he hit a great pass. I, I, like I said, I don't know how he got it to him. Hits Robert Parrish, and Larry looks over his shoulder at me, and he laughs. He said, I told you, motherfucker. And you know what? <laughs> But it's also had a telling effect on Michael Cooper underneath the basket. They're wearing him out. That's what made Larry larger than life because if anybody in today's game, maybe Steph Curry comes off that, they force that shot up there. They mm -hmm. try to get the shot off. But that's the difference between Larry. That play right there softens you up for the next time. Now Kareem's not going to jump out. Now Larry's wide open to shoot the ball. So 
I would expect former players to really understand that, you but really I do. never ever discount another player at any decade. I hate Larry Bird, but I respect the hell out of that man. And Larry Bird was one of the greatest three point shooters that's ever played this game. Fuck percentages. It ain't about that. It's about hitting big shots. 